One of my YouTube followers recently um, commented that uh, it always seems like I have a smile on my face and uh, they asked if I ever am unhappy or am I ever um, kind of frustrated or angry. I do face a lot of challenges in my work because the kinds of impact that I'm trying to achieve uh, in my job is not easily gotten. It can be incredibly challenging to make even the smallest difference in people's lives when we're talking about these really uh, difficult and challenging issues like equality or trying to use innovation to promote sustainable development and things like that. So I want to tell you a story about how I uh, maintained my sense of optimism in the face of really, really difficult odds. Now, I write a lot of applications for funding as part of my job. It's just fundamental to what I do. And this is a very risky proposition. It's not as if you just write the application and you're even remotely guaranteed getting the award or getting the funding. A lot of things can go wrong. It can go wrong in the idea stage. So you can just have an idea that maybe isn't quite novel or doesn't meet the funder's needs and their requirements. Um, you can just make a, a small glitch and the funder says, oh, you're ineligible or that application's uh, not going to be accepted. Uh, the quality of the partnership can also go awry, and this could go awry at the very last moment. So the day before you're going to submit, one of the partners might come and say, hey, I'm sorry, but I'm not allowed to, or I don't have the opportunity to participate in this proposal any longer. And so there's a lot of pitfalls that you can uh, kind of fall through, and it takes a lot of trust, and it takes a lot of uh, kind of perseverance. Uh, of course, the feasibility of the proposal can also be under scrutiny. So uh, the funders could simply look at the proposal and say, this is not a feasible objective. You're not going to be able to achieve that in the time that we have. So there's a lot of risk in starting that process. Even in the best of circumstances, you're unlikely to achieve like an acceptance rate of more than five or 10%. So it's really uh, critical that you approach that process with some humility uh, because chances are you're not going to get the funding. And even in the uh, most difficult or competitive of cases, you can have an acceptance rate as low as 1%. But the payoff can really be life-changing. It can take you from maybe anonymity or obscurity as an institution or as a, a, an investigator, as an innovator, and it can take you and propel your career into, uh, into acclaim and achievement. And that's really, really amazing. So there's a lot of uh, upfront effort that you put in for a small percentage of, uh, of a chance of winning, but the stakes for winning are really, really high. So a lot of these opportunities mean that funders are, are granting you millions and millions of euros to do uh, work to achieve impact. And that might be putting knowledge into practice, that might be building capacity or using innovation to spurn economic growth through entrepreneurship. Uh, these are most of the spaces, at least, that I work in. Now, if you'll just picture this with me uh, for a second, uh, I'm an early stage researcher, so I'm in my uh, early 30s. Uh, I am seeking out opportunities to apply for funding. So I'm in my office and I'm just Googling around, trying to find as many different opportunities that are out there to do my best to kind of come into my own as an academic. And uh, it was, on the Norwegian Research Council's website, and this is the national funding body for research and innovation in Norway, that I discovered an opportunity to apply for funding. Now, starting with that opportunity is just the first step. So it took quite a bit to get from there to a finished application, uh, and it was really a process of imagining a new idea, of assembling 
partners. And in that process, it kind of went from an organized, very kind of succinct approach, at least in my head, to kind of chaos, trying to assemble these partners, get everyone to agree on our concept and put forward our proposal. Um, I met with the leader of the Research Institute to kind of get approval and to get make sure that they were okay. And uh, that was a real critical opportunity because they could have just shut the door completely. And then I wouldn't have been able to actually propose uh, propose my idea. Um, the stress that you go under in the process of um, putting one of these applications out is significant. Uh, so there's a lot of writing involved. There's a lot of research involved in writing proposals. Uh, there's a lot of communication that needs to be done. There's a lot of administration and coordination that needs to be done. You have to kind of think through your budget and your implementation plan to a T. And all of that kind of takes and you develop the kind of work and in the process your stress load increases, increases, increases to a peak right before you're about to press that fateful button to submit your application. And then suddenly everything kind of goes, ah, and you relax for a moment because you've done everything you can do up to that point and you've made that submission. So there's kind of a feeling of success in and of just that. Um, and then it's a time to anxiously check your emails every day, hoping that you'll receive a decision. Even if it's a negative decision, at least it gives you that sense of closure. And uh, after days and weeks, you kind of get bored and you're kind of like, okay, is this ever gonna get decided on? Because these processes sometimes take months before a decision has been made. And then one day you go to work, you open your email and you see that notification. You see that email from whomever the funder is and uh, you get excited because now you're gonna know whether or not your application was accepted. And of course, nine times out of 10, you leave reading that email with a sense of, ah, well, we tried our best or maybe a little bit of, uh, of kind of, um, sadness uh, over the effort that you put in and not getting that funding. Now, I'm telling you this as a kind of general narrative because uh, when I uh, first applied for an EU grant, uh, I knew my chances for achieving success in applying for that grant were incredibly low. Uh, and I had applied for EU grants before, but uh, this one I felt like was different. I'm telling you this story because I know going into a grant application that my chances of it being accepted are extremely low. Even though I've had success in getting grants, it never guarantees you a, re a chance of getting that, uh, that funding. You still have to start kind of at square one, try your best to get that, uh, get that proposal accepted. And when I first started writing grants, I had absolutely no business writing them at that stage of my career. I was ex very, 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 very green. Uh, but I was given a chance and I was confident that even if I couldn't successfully get that grant, that at least I would have a chance and I would learn from that process. And honestly, I was super optimistic. Every time I submit a grant, I am super optimistic because I always know that in that experience, I will gain so much, uh, so many new skills and so much new knowledge and abilities, whether that's like power skills, communication, leadership, and things like that, or whether that's technical skills, how to structure a proposal, how to budget a proposal, how to uh, kind of uh, put uh, an implementation plan into practice. All of these things are valuable uh, knowledge and abilities that you can get out of a grant proposal process. But I realized in reflection that my optimism is not because I think that things are gonna be successful necessarily. My optimism going into a situation where I have a 1% or 3% chance of success, my optimism comes out of my absolute love and passion for learning. 
So where some people might see that, Anthony, you're just really optimistic in everything that you do, and maybe you you're smile all the time. Yeah, that's true, but that's only because I love learning. It's not because of the of my failures, because my failures have been many, many, many. And so I think it's really important that we kind of reframe and reorient how we understand uh, our chances for success, because it's really not about the success for me. It's not about winning that award. It's about learning from that experience. And if anything, I learn more from those failures than I learn from the successes, from the times that I've gotten uh, grant funded. So the takeaway is basically just let your love of learning drive your ambitions. If you do this, you'll be able to remain optimistic in the face of almost any challenge that you might face. Um, and the call to action here is uh, that optimism, in my view, uh, isn't about imagining some kind of best case scenario or some kind of utopia. It's not about that. It's about understanding what you can learn from your experience, whether it's successful or not. So think about something that you want to learn this month or this week, and what challenges do you want to face in order to learn those lessons? I think this is a very valuable way of thinking about our day-to-day -day life, our work, and how we go about uh, embracing uh, a learning process.